and we're live <laughs> i think i hope uh yep that seems to be working all right all right all right all right um it's been a while it's been i think about a month or something i don't know when the last stream was but um welcome everyone Today's stream is about doing Rust things. Um, my name is Yash, for everyone who doesn't know me. Um, there's a little chat box here on the left-hand side. Hopefully, you'll be able to put some words in, and then we can have an interactive uh, streaming. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> it's Twitch. People know Twitch. Um, yeah. Uh, so what's in the menu for today? We don't have too many issues open. So sometimes I just go through issues and I close them and I work on them and all that stuff. But I um, already did that this morning. Uh, just came back from the gym. So I'm feeling really good. Uh, computer's overheating. That's also normal, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's been a while. I kind of just wanted to show off some, some of the stuff I've been doing. Um, two days ago, someone on ISC was like, hey, you know what? Um, there's this uh, uh, person called Yash who uh, has been streaming a bunch of stuff and I learned a whole bunch of stuff and I was like, oh, that, that's really nice. People apparently watched these videos back and they learned some things and I don't know. <laughs> I like the idea. Oh, let's put this. Oh, can you see me? You can see me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was thinking I'd share some of the things I've been doing. And then as we talk about those things, we'll probably find something to work on or not. And then we call it an early day. How about that? <laughs> all right. All right. All right. So let's go to GitHub. People online. Who is online? Edit appearance. Pop out. Uh, where's the people? The rooms? No, oh. <gasps> no. There, there used to be a button somewhere where you could see who's online. Oh, users in chat. It's just me. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, oh, I made a lot of contributions today. I guess I reviewed a whole bunch of PRs, which is nice. Um, repos. So I made this thing, I'm working on this thing, I made this thing, I updated this thing, also made this thing, and that's probably most of it. All right, let's go through it. So, um, I, so currently I'm working on uh, the that RS project. Ooh, the interlace, yes. I don't know what that does. Oh, my mouse is stuck. All right, color tree, welcome. Nice of you to, to drop by and say hi. Um, so that RS. God, my, my mouse keeps like pulling to the left. It's super annoying. Okay, no more mouse time. No, mouse time is over. Uh, GitHub.com, that RS. So if you follow my streams or Twitter, then you might have seen this every now and then. Uh, but basically, it's a re-implementation of the DAP protocol. Oh, Coetry, first time watching you stream live instead of on YouTube. You should do this more often. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and you're right. I should do this more often. Happy you're tuning in. So, you know, I'm, I'm working on this thing. But, um, I don't know. Ended up, uh, we, we've got 22 repos right now. And, I don't know, I, I was like noticing like, hey, uh, managing 22 Rust repos, it's getting kind of hairy. So we should probably like start working on some tooling to make it a bit more manageable. And, uh, I, I was like, okay, cool. How, how can we, for example, like do pre-builds? If we build a, a oh, <laughs> okay, fine. Question time, fuck it. Whatever I wanted to say, screw that. <laughs> so Godry is asking, how long have you been hacking on Rust? I really want to get into it, but living in JS land these days. Uh, and you want to help out with that Rust? That's really nice. <laughs> so. First off, like th thanks for like the interest in that Rust in the first place. Like, I would love for people to like, come and hang out and like help out. That's great. Um, 
like strictly speaking i've been trying rust on and off for like three years or so uh ever since the 1.0 release i was like oh rust seems to have a really cool premise i don't know c plus plus i only do javascript and shell um so i should learn it and, you know I, I kept trying it didn't click went out of it did some other stuff went back in tried it didn't click went out of it and then like um at the end of last year i guess is um and I was like, okay, okay. I, it, Rust just keeps getting better. I keep wanting to learn more about it. It's clearly I'm starting to hit like the JavaScript bottlenecks, the limits. Um, my friends are starting to hit him too. For example, in, in the sense of that, people were like, okay, instead of like rewriting that, how can we like get Node.js to bind into Android? And, you know, con conceptually that, that doesn't seem ideal because <laughs> you're basically mushing two runtimes together somehow hacking them that they work i don't, I don't know uh, it works but you know it's it's like applying a hot glue gun to launch a spaceship uh, weird analogy it didn't seem the cleanest option so i was like hey you know what we should probably like you know <laughs> find a way to rewrite that in rust and you know that is a great opportunity to like use rust professionally rather than like on and off um so i started doing that um so full-time i've been doing it for slightly over half a year now uh kind of hacking on it like a year trying it three years uh, but i i think the the that with like two months like a month of solid like study and really going at it and not giving up is is you can get pretty comfortable and like at the three month mark you'll be like okay i understand some of the more wider things of like how to implement traits uh when to use certain traits when to use certain other things some of the experimental flags like half a year in you'll be like okay okay it's it's very workable but it's mostly a function of time um at least it was for me does that answer some somewhat the question I hope it does. I I think that was. <laughs> I hope it was a good, good question. <laughs> All right. So coach is saying, makes sense. My my first step will be to understand the DAP protocol first, and then just go through your code. Small contributions at first. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. That sounds great. Um, I'm hopefully we'll have a bit more chance to document the DAP protocol later. Uh, people are writing heaps of RFCs, which is so good. Uh, but we want to build an implementation guide. So I'm talking to some people if we can like make that happen time wise, get you know some funding for that so we can like <laughs> so I don't need to fund it out of my own pocket, uh, which which would be fantastic. Um, like I um, so, something that some people have said was helpful for them was like just taking the DAT code and the Rust code side by side and you sort of see the same code pop out. Um, but yeah, personally, I, 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 I'm more of a doer kind of thing. I don't know. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Should I, should I, I still want to talk about the tools that I made. <laughs> That's the reason why I started streaming. But if you, if you have like any questions about anything, like please keep them coming. It's um, question time. <laughs> all right, all right. So um, yeah, actually, Hold on, hold on. I want to show. I want to show this off. All right, so, what I want, what I really, 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 really want, is to um, be able to have all this stuff. So there, there's there's this thing. Oh, what is this a mobile view? Oh, they messed up the CSS. That's weird. Okay, let's go to releases. Ah, strange. We get the mobile CSS for some reason. Uh, are we requesting a mobile page? Okay. Um, my idea is I wanted to, uh, fuck words, 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 words. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So that RS 22 projects, single repo. I'm the main maintainer of most of them. Um, and it's kind of, you know, um, if, if you want to grow a project, you, you need to ask yourself some questions like, okay, how, how can I uh, enforce guidelines? How can I enforce quality guidelines for everyone? So that a random person 
a person you might not know, a person who might have different opinions or might not have any opinions at all, uh, can come into a project and be like, okay, I want to help out. And then, you know, they're in there and they're like, okay, I'm going to help out now. And then at every step of the way, they, they feel like someone's assisting them. They're like, oh, how should I format things? And there's like, oh, there's a very clear answer on how you should format things because here's Rust format and it'll format stuff for you. And if you didn't format it, uh, CI will tell you, hey, please format your code. Right? And hopefully contributing guidelines can explain like, oh, this is how you install the formatter in your uh, editor so it can auto format and you no longer need to think about it, right? Um, stuff like that, like tests, like how do you, what kind of test do we want? How do we, all, all this other stuff. It's a whole bunch of documentation. And when people want to use a project, uh, stuff like uh, changelog, for example, is hyper important. So, you know, we build a changelog tool. Um, people oftentimes look at the releases. They're like, oh, what version am I on? What was the changelog since the last version? Um, if you're running a binary, right? So th this is a standalone command line tool. You might run want to run it in places. You know, you uh, will need to download. Uh, compiling it yourself might not be ideal. So, whoops. So in, instead, you know, you get like, oh, I want the uh, the Raspberry Pi version of this tool so I can run it on my Raspberry Pi, or I want the, the Linux version of this tool and it's like self-contained. And then you can like just download it and run it. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So that this one's not self-contained. This one is, which makes it twice as big. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. There, 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 there's certain quality things that um, you, you can do for your projects. And if, if you can like automate them, then suddenly the quality of your project just goes up. Um, yeah, so I've, I've been working on cross-gen, which allows you to do the pre-built stuff. So you can have releases. And if you can hook this back up to, for example, uh, the pacman command so it's an installer to do some stuff right then we can publish it to the things you could put you could use this build here to create a publish for um what's it called homebrew for mac os right but we're already doing the heavy lifting in terms of pre-builds hey dan welcome <laughs> nice of you to join again um yeah like the the I just want projects to be of higher quality without human intervention. So CrossGen does the pre-builds. Um, then there's this other cool project we made, which is called GitHub Templates, uh, which allows you now say, we're like, oh, uh, there's an issue somewhere. Uh, fix OpenSSL cross. Oh, we found a different issue. Cool. What kind of issue was it? And it says bug report, feature request, question. And it's like, oh, I have a bug report. And I'd ask you to fill out some stuff, explain what was up, and then you, you fill that out. And it makes it a lot easier for the, um, for the maintainers to parse this stuff and be like, oh, I, you know, I can see you're running an old version of CrossGen. Maybe you should upgrade to a new version. Oh, that behavior is strange. Like, oh, here's like a repro. Cool, I can now dig in and, and try and fix it. It just creates like a higher quality conversation uh same so you know we filled it out here for example and we um, i myself am filling these out also and people like are engaging with it because they can like oh okay i kind of get what's going on here uh handle at there too like oh here's a feature request why do we want this what's the expected behavior uh what's the drawbacks what's irrational alternatives unresolved questions right the, the, just by by forcing higher quality issues um, things become better <laughs> is, is my hopes. Um, yeah. So a lot of these tools like, uh, require are integrating with GitHub, for example, in order to, uh, create pre-releases for GitHub releases, you need to encrypt. <laughs> it's really fucked up. You need to, um, uh, go to Travis api.travis.org or something and then uh, slash keys and then your username slash repo name. It gives you a public key that allows you to encrypt the secret that can only be decrypted with the private key. Uh, that is correct. And that's how you can check in a GitHub token 
that allows Travis in turn to like use that token to decrypt it and you publicly check in the base 64 version of that encrypted token for GitHub into your project. So you create one project per token. Uh, it's strange, but it, it works. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> There's like lots of weird moving parts and I made this one crate to make interacting with, uh, oh, I fucked this up, with uh, GitHub a lot easier. So actually, let's fix this real quick. Uh, uh, GitHub local remote. Uh, oh. Fix code highlight. Right. Okay, that should have uploaded. There we go. So here, here we can. Um, uh, what does this do again? Find a GitHub URL, repo, and username for a local directory. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there was this whole thing with like a regex of parsing the local thing and like trying to like, oh, is this actually? Do we have a remote that's even like a GitHub URL or not? And this would just finds it for you locally, uh, which is kind of nice. Um, this is a crate that I'm still working on to enable the Pendabot because the Pendabot is a little miracle worker for Hypercore. Uh, slash oh, Hypercore. It does uh, automatic dependency upgrades. Um, Hypercore on oh, pull requests. <laughs> a lot more. It just says update memory pager from 0 0.7 to 0 0.8 that runs it and if it works if the test pass it will merge it uh, you can configure all of this but that, that's the way i like it so it just always runs uh tests for you and always be like okay this worked this worked this worked this worked it's passing it's passing and then as as soon as like a dependency cannot upgrade you know you like need to dive in and fix it otherwise you're stuck um which works for active projects that you actively want to maintain, but you also trust the dependencies to try and be as stable as possible, uh, which can be hard, but you kind of grow judgment for that. I like it for the data rest stuff because it also creates opportunity for people to um, go in into the project and uh, label dependencies. Oh. <laughs> Label dependencies. Yeah. I, w I wish there was a better way to filter issues directly from this page, but uh, yeah. <laughs> the the idea is that you can like just direct people out like, oh hey, here's like a dependency upgrade. You want to get involved with the project? Here's a great way to get involved with the project, and you know, um, that can work. Um, what else have we made? So get up templates, get up auth. Oh yeah, we upgraded this. So I did this last week or something, uh, not here. We want the docs to 0 0.7. So now we have a complete enumeration of every GitHub scope available. So if you create a token, these are all the scopes that are possible, which is kind of fun. <laughs> GitHub OAuth scope definitions, all right? Uh, what else, what else, what else, what else? <sighs> Um, oh, let's have some water while we wait for this. Yeah, it's, it's just like, you know, keeping on trying to, um, uh, improve the workflow. A few options I still see is automating, um, from Travis, um, running the, uh, change log and outputting the change log to um, to the release and in the change log itself. So we have the change log one tool. Where is it? Change log, change log. There we go. Oh, cool. 56 styles releases. Are we uploading? No, we're not uploading yet. We need to initialize cross-chain for this. Yeah. Anyway, um, 
it would be cool if in this change log um we could add stuff like information from github so right now all it does is um includes a name so it says oh it was me because that's the name before my email address and we get from the committer info right so oh hey it was dan reeves Ta -da! <laughs> Um, but it, it would be really nice if it could just link to at Dan Reeves on GitHub and link this to the issue number 13 and could be like, oh, there were five issues closed since the last release. Here's a list of issues closed. There were two PRs closed. Here's a list of PRs closed. Right? Um, three issues created. Right? And then you kind of get a sense of like, oh, what changed? Auto update change log tags would be great. Oh, also that it would be sweet if you could like, um, if Travis could somehow commit the change log back down. So when you, yeah, indeed, when you do a tag, it uh, triggers a change log update and commits it back. Um, oh, Though we might need to skip Travis for that and write a bot instead that when it does a release, it actually goes through and runs the changelog command and creates a commit and updates. So you can actually see changelog bot made this thing. Maybe even does a PR for a changelog, sees a test pass or something right. along those lines. <laughs> but yeah, maybe even if changelog markdown changed from outside of it, like rejects a, I don't know. There, there, there could be like a bot we could run for this. There, there is a, a version in which this, all this stuff could be automated. Also the, but I, I, I like this idea. It's a good idea. The, the, the question is more of execution of how, how do you do that? Because right now everything I'm just running locally and updating and then on Travis um, for the other stuff. Why do I have two open pull requests? Oh, and yeah, cross chain. Did I fuck that up? I think I fucked that up. <laughs> yeah, okay, I need to fix that. All right, let's close this. Uh, close, 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 close pull request. Because we need to update it. Right. Um, but yeah. What's new? What's new? What's new? Um, oh yeah, the final bit that I would love to see is um, I'm just gonna draft a quick issue for this feature request. So what are we gonna call this? Uh, uh, document semver changes. Document uh, API changes. Sem semver API changes. Semver API changes uh, for Rust projects. Uh, so the the idea here is is we could look at the Rust source uh, when something changes, right? And then we're like, oh, um, we can see that since the last release there was um, one method added. There was one method who changed, where the signature was changed and here there was a method deleted. Given there was a signature change and there was a deletion of the method, this would be semver major, right? <laughs> it's a semver incompatible change or like, hey, there was like a requirement drop for a trait. This means it's a semver minor because it's just a feature, right? Or patch because nothing was impacted except for like that thing right so it it becomes like um not so much a signaler of semver it becomes more of a um it's, it's basically what people are actually interested in when you're looking at a change log you want to know which features were added which generally is like a you know hu uh, the, the only right way to to do that is is by humans writing it or like gathering test names, <laughs> that might also be a fun one, right? Or new test files added or whatever. Um, but uh, 
yeah, you, you, you generally want to know what changed in the APIs. Like, oh, I need to upgrade. Something changed. What changed? Then you like just look at the changes and you're like, oh, cool. I can see this. I can upgrade this. Right? Hopefully it links back to the issues and the PRs and you can like get the rationale. You can get insight into why changes were made, which is very satisfactory. Like in, it, it just makes projects easier to use. Um, yeah, <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be great if we could sort of like hit that point. Um, just going to write the issue because it's been in my head for like ages. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> it'd be even better if we could like extract features somehow automatically. But I think that that's too specific. You can't really get it from test names. Um, maybe we could document tests added. That would be fantastic. Um, Like, oh yeah, we're, we're now testing more things. Great, and they're like, oh, sweet. The test suite is now stricter, right? <laughs> um, because it, it just feels like a lot, of, a lot of the documentations about like things were done. <laughs> uh, so, uh, one paragraph explanation of feature. All right. So when uh, an API uh, Rust program was changed, uh, edited, added, removed. You should uh, automatic document that in a new under a new header called API. New header called API. Um, all right, why are we doing this? What, which, which use cases does it support? Damn it, that's a typo. Uh, uh, change logs are intended to document changes. Oh, the, 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 the markdown thingy, the styling with markdown here at the bottom of the page keeps on like floating up as a type. Do you see it? Like, tuck, tuck. It's just like going up and down. It's really annoying. <laughs> just a little bit of motion sickness. Um, uh, and APIs are um, docking are mostly mostly used. Uh, I said this. One of the most important things to keep tabs on is API changes. Most important things in the program to keep tabs on being keeping versions is our API changes. It'd be fantastic. We could automatically document which APIs were added, removed, or changed so that uh, upgrading between versions would become easier. Um, open questions, unresolved questions. Um, a big unresolved question is uh, uh, drawbacks. People might uh, attach too much value to API changes and uh, forget about side effects. Uh, to consider uh, changes inside of effects as relevant to Semver, something like that. The, 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 the thing I'm going for here is, um, say we document API changes automatically, right? Then what will happen is people will be like, oh, sweet, like we, we can see what changed in between versions, except you can't. You can see that some things change between versions, but you can't see all things change between versions. versions. Um, for example, um, say we're now writing to a different configuration path. 
or we clear, we add functionality internally that clears all, that resets all passwords, right? Or like all tokens locally for some reason. That's considered a breaking change, but you can't really capture that. So just like with tests, um, this method will be, um, uh, the, 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 the thing to say about tests is tests can prove um, the existence of bugs, but a test can never prove the absence of bugs, um, <laughs> which I like because, you know, uh, you, you can keep on writing tests, but it will not prove your program is correct. Uh, you can only like write a test, have an expectancy and like, oh shit, it's actually failing. Uh, okay, okay, we fixed that part, but there can still be other bugs. You can root many, but uh, yeah, uh, just like with tests, uh, um, this method can prove, can show, um, method will only prove changes uh that uh everything is consistent therefore we should not attach much value to therefore should not attach too much value to it. sometimes i find writing in english really hard because my i don't know it's not my first language <laughs> especially when I'm a little bit tired, like today. Um, rationale and alternatives. Why is this design the best in the space of possible designs? Uh, what are designs being considered? What's the rationale for not choosing them? What's the impact of not doing this? Um, so what happens if we don't do this? Um, without this feature, people need to manually compare versions to figure out what changed. This is a labor, labor intensive process. Labor intensive uh, uh, must be repeated for every person <laughs> using uh, upgrade. Um, by documenting the API changes, um, uh, we can. <laughs> I think I think the right term would be memoized. I just said pre-compute uh, overview of changes, which makes upgrading easier. What are designs have been considered? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if there's like many other designs. It's like, it's more like a goal. It's kind of like a vague one. Uh, drawbacks, expected behavior. Blah, 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 blah. Will become. Expected behavior. Tell us how the feature should work. Explain the feature largely in terms of examples. Uh, so there's an implementation guide and there's a, a usage guide, and I think we should add that. Um, uh, there's an implementation guide, a usage guide in the uh, Rust CFP uh, uh, thing, and and we should probably have that. Um, okay, uh, for for this template also, but we don't. So expected behavior. Uh, uh, when a person, um, uh, when change log is run, it works. It computes a change log. So change log for the last version. Um, derived from Git. Um, bu, 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 bu. What do people think of this feature? Do people think this would be useful? I know um, lots of lots of you in chat are like not um, 
writing Rust, but probably different things. But like just the idea of it, does that seem helpful? What, what, what do people think? Because I'm sort of like going at this like, I think I would want this or I would appreciate it if I was using a project and there were clear upgrade instructions, um, right? It was a, a, a big common thing people kept on saying is like, oh, with change logs, just write them by hand. <laughs> uh, it's so hard. So I'm, I'm, I'm building this change log tool because it's not feasible for me to keep a change log by hand. Like if I had to do that, I would like drop 20% of my time or something, or I don't know, there, there would just be a lot of time invested into this and giving up ownership of a project becomes harder because people can no longer run the change log tool um, themselves. So no, I know I'd struggle. Um, yeah, also 727 repos of my own. Nah, they're like 500 of my own, but I have like a whole bunch more in organizations. So I, I don't know. <laughs> it's I, I, I would struggle to, to keep everything up to date instead of like being able to like drop in and be like, oh, here's an update, goodbye. And then like, peace out. Uh, for last version, in addition, uh, based on git, based on git slash github information, in addition, it detects whether a cargo.toml file is present. Um, Dan Reeves says, yeah, it sounds great. Most of the time when I'm going through a change log, I'm looking for when and how some API changed. Yeah, same for me, actually. <laughs> um, what are Tom and uh, computes the API changes? API changes, uh, guide. Behavior level guide. Yeah, that's better. Um, Do people have any other requests or like wishes for changelog? Are there like any things that people would love to see? Um, Cause I just kind of keep on adding things that I think would be useful, but maybe I'm missing something. Like for, for example, right now we have the, um, the big, uh, what do you call it? So changelog markdown. There's this files section, <laughs> the stat stuff. Do people think that's useful? Do people don't think that's useful? Um, like the, this is just like one, so it's like really big, but uh, GitHub auth, right? Change a lot, a little bit smaller. For example here, is that useful to look at? Oh my God, yeah, okay, that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> this one's a little bit better. Um, Cause I, I think it might be useful. I don't know, I've, I've never needed it but it kind of feels like, okay, we can see that there was a builder file added, added. There was an authenticator file added and there was a scopes file added. That makes sense. Now, can we derive that from this? Uh, I think maybe if we like have API changes that will become, um, or API documentation that will become less relevant. But for now we can sort of like look at it and understand it. Um, Yeah. <laughs> Just waiting on my RSI, RSI timer. <laughs> so I've been getting this, um, I've been seeing a practitioner, <laughs> a trainer, and one of the things she recommended was using this ball to like massage my arm. It's so good. Really like relaxes the muscles. Cause sometimes it feels like super tense after like typing for too long or like, I don't know, doing a bad sports exercise. 
uh, like with that bar it just like massages the whole muscles there's like tissue or something that connects all this stuff kind of like wraps around it and just like a little uh it just feels really good after <laughs> we'll have to be like doing this here because we were doing uh military presses today and ugh, i can like barely keep my arms above my head <laughs> it sucks uh rests and verver um so what did i say here detail of the work can be found here progress made not directly code related changes to required recursive checking of dependencies blacklisting modules all that stuff all right what's that second language roth all right Uh, um, the best place to start is probably Rust and Verver. Uh, it's already capable of generating API change logs. Um, we need to find zoom it the library as markdown. Not, I guess is should be relatively straight forward. Uh, next sentence we could and I should also show their setting our intents and so we can collaborate on making this feature happen all right there we go All right, so unresolved questions. What related issues do you consider out of scope? Uh, we cannot uh, mm, does not answer how to document uh, bin changes. Uh, CLI API changes. Neither does it how to address, sorry. Changes. Uh, uh, nor uh, provide an answer for not Rust projects. All right. Um, yeah, I think that's most of it for this issue. Um, what else is there? Oh yeah, <laughs> actually since last time I streamed, um, I joined the Rust Net working group been doing a bunch of <laughs> so technically I'm leading the uh, the web working group so the the, the uh, story time the net working group was launched a couple of months ago um, but the people involved um, I don't know they're, 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 I, I wasn't part of it but it, it seemed it didn't really catch like have any momentum so people were like yeah let's do this uh, networking thing and then I think in between like waiting for async await to happen and people working on their frameworks and some other things and upgrading the uh, Tokyo library, upgrading the futures library, uh, futures suddenly not no longer working. Um, so it only used to work on, it, it used to work on stable and nightly and future 0.3 only works on nightly. I, I don't know, I, I, I feel like people kind of like, 
disappeared people everyone was like oh we need to wait on each other and and it's, it's a great way to lose momentum um so yeah uh a couple of weeks ago now maybe maybe like a month ago uh aaron Turan, who also leads the the rust project in general he's part of leadership uh, works for mozilla was like okay we're doing a reboot of this working group all the other uh working groups are doing well so we want to bring this one also up to speed um let's see how we need to split and so, and so it was split um we have now three sub working groups with um, two people leading it per sub working group several members involved and trying to like you know get the thing off the ground for the rust 2018 edition at the end of this year uh, so I'm, I'm doing the uh, web part which right now means http services and aaron's taking on um doing stuff around middleware doing stuff around building like a diy framework and i'm more looking at like the wider ecosystem and being like okay cool uh, how do we how can we improve this um, but yeah my, my role right now is mostly of like writing issues uh second of all <laughs> sending out agendas third of all date pickers <laughs> talking to people answering questions trying to get them like to the right path to the right track it's uh it's it's um what do they call it cat herding so yeah i don't know <laughs> rust leadership uh it's kind of fun uh and so yeah that's that's also like another thing i've been up to recently Dress non Rust projects. I think that's good. So, labels. Help wanted. That's it. And oh, it's also uh, an enhancement. Sweet. Sub in new issue. Here's an issue. Awesome. uh add information from github i should also want help here please send help all right um so that's it for that issue yeah 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 um do we have some things open here how long have we been going for we've been going for an hour all right CLI flag to regenerate GitHub token. Ha, <laughs> sneaky, cool. Thanks, Dan. It's good, it's good. Dash dash regenerate to authenticate with GitHub again and generate a token. If you delete the token from the GitHub UI, but still cache on your system and cross-chain will keep using it as a valid token. Right now you have to hunt down the token and delete to get a cross-chain to reauthor with GitHub. And check to see if the token exists over the GitHub API, but I haven't looked into that. Uh, it's great. Awesome. <laughs> uh, I like this a lot. Uh, labels, enhancement. Oh, Stacking says, what's Hypercore again? I've been doing web dev lately, so I haven't touched Rust in a few months. All right, I'm glad you asked. So Hypercore is um, a append-only log. So you, you can think of a log as an array, <laughs> basically. And you can only append to that array and uh, we do a bunch of like cryptographic signing on it to um, ensure that you know if uh, the idea is you share this array over the network and people can get any part of it but then you have one author and only that author can write to it so um, they have a private key and they publish a public key and then it efficiently shares it over the network with multiple people and they can get the data uh, on top of it, you can implement all sorts of fun things. So people have built uh, key value stores. On top of that key value store, uh, people have built um, file system abstractions. On top of that file system abstraction, people are now doing other things like, okay, cool. We can express a website or a tree of files as um, uh, on, on this abstraction. Uh, like protobufs with encryption. We actually do use protobufs, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a bit more than that. It's like, what if BitTorrent uh, could update files, right? 
So BitTorrent only has like static archives. You share one file, it's this size, it has this metadata, everyone shares it. And if you want to add a file to it, so you have a photo collection with friends, and you want to update the photo collection, you would need to create a new torrent. Except with that, uh, you could just write a new, you would add a file to it and then it would work because you, you append to it. Um, so it's a, it's a bit different. <laughs> Um, but the, the, the whole thing right now is in Node.js, uh, it does work in the browser somewhat. Um, there's a browser around it using Electron, so it, it all works. Um, but in order to get to run efficiently on mobile phones, to uh, run on different platforms, you know, having a native version is, is very helpful. Uh, so that, that's the work I've been doing in the last couple of months. Uh, except for a little segue where I was like, oh, God damn, we have 22 projects now. Let's let's up the quality a little bit. <laughs> so it's kind of a mix like Zookeeper and a few other technologies. It's like they all had babies. Yeah. I I don't think that's too bad of an analogy. Sort of like at, at what ben which benefits it provides. Implementation-wise, it's very different, but the, the, the benefits of it, they're kind of there. Uh, you could use uh, Hypercore as is, more or less as a Kafka replacement, but you know, uh, <laughs> there, 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 there's some other stuff you would need for that. Um, but the like Hypercore is one of the foundational pieces that then allows other people to build out the key value store, the file system, go into Kafka esque like directions, um, which which I think is cool. Um, Hope that somewhat makes sense. It's actually not too hard under the hood. It, it It's all like pretty straightforward data structures, but they just have to be written and they have to be written well and they need to like be hooked up correctly. So, you know, uh, okay, let's get this. Uh, this is good. All right, more issues. Uh, we're reading that, we're reading that. Let's check this out. Uh, VCO. Uh, it has not worked. It has not worked. Oh, damn it. Eee. Oh, it's still. Oh, dang. Uh, it still needs to be signed. Try this instead. Run this once. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, so it's really annoying because. <laughs> I found out the other day that in Git, um, there's signing off commits and signing commits. Yeah, yeah. So I do not require signed commits, but I do require a sign off. Um, requiring signed commits, that's a little hardcore. Uh, so there's this. Um, I'm I'm going to explain my reasoning here. Because I, I know this is a tricky thing and there's a lot of people that are like, Mwah. <laughs> why do you need all this stuff? Why does this matter? Um, um, the thing is I've had chats with lawyers about this stuff where um, at some point, uh, even some financing for my projects was like, hey, Josh, your projects are cool, but what's the licensing on your projects like? And I was like, oh, it's MIT, it's great. And you know, the company lawyers were like, yeah, but we can't use it per se. If, <laughs> or, hey, we will, we only want to contribute if, if, you know, if the licensing is normal. I was like, what do you mean? And then um, basically DCO is kind of almost like required. Um, damn it, okay. I'm not making too much sense. Uh, Kyle Mitchell incoming outgoing. 
please find this. Damn it. Uh, Kyle Mitchell Lawyer. Damn it. What's his handle? Lawyer Oakland. Kyle Mitchell Attorney. Oh, come on. Twitter.com. So that uh, license zero. Okay, here we go. License zero, which is by service of artless devices. Thanks. Sincere technical legal vending machine. Okay, damn it. Uh, Kyle. All right, I'm just gonna like find this for you because it's important. Um, <sighs> Google's RAM dual licensing. Blah 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 blah. Incoming, outgoing. Anyway, the okay. I'm I'm not gonna find this, but. But, but, but the idea here, here, here's the crux of it. Um, if your code is licensed under MIT or Apache or something else, um, it does not mean that people contributing to your code are also licensing their code under Apache or MIT. They're, they're not necessarily granting rights to you. Um, what happens is uh, <laughs> In like the outgoing license, the license you are providing to other people for usage of your code does not mean that that license also applies to contributions made onto your code. So there needs to be uh, a thing where people are like, no, 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 no. Okay, I'm licensing my code on the same license and cite their project and now it becomes a bundle package and they can send it off. So um, what does this say? I'm going to guess you have to sign an EULA and then have them the sign commit for reference they sign. No. So uh, what turned out, people did research on this uh, in courts and stuff. And what they agreed on is that signing the EULA kind of stuff, like the whole signing of like, I agree to all these terms. For example, it used to be the case. I do not know if it's still the case. That if you contribute to a Facebook project, you need to go to a separate website, sign that you like give away all your rights and then you, your contribution could be accepted. Um, turns out just signing off your commit and having like a, a certificate, developer certificate of origin, that's enough. So that's what we do. Um, and to enforce that people are actually complying with this, there's the um, DCO bot. That's just like, hi there, could you please sign off your commits to ensure that your commits your commit? And more or less, that makes the legal framework hold. <laughs> um, yeah. Now, is that great? Do I like it? No, I don't. But it's like another mechanism. Um, beh. Like, I don't know. It's also very experimental. I'm not like 100% convinced of it yet. Because I I'm sort of understanding the theory there. It's it's the kind of thing that's never directly bitten me yet, but it almost did. So now I'm kind of wary about it. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, maybe it is hardcore. But if we can make it easy, if we can make it trivial for people to sign the commits, um, like I'm doing that, for example. Um, Yeah, so I, I bet Golang requires you to do the whole thing. Um, Rust is super lenient in that regard, um, but I'm less lenient, I guess, <laughs> just for the sole reason that I, I kind of get the theory behind it. I've seen like lawyers get a bit worked up about it, so yeah. Anyway, <laughs> hope that somewhat answers it. I don't know. Maybe we should remove the DCO bot. Maybe we should keep it. Maybe it's a great idea. Maybe it's a terrible idea. I don't know. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Do I have anything else to share? I don't know if I do. 
Um, last time we did a pot, we did a uh, one of these things. We uh, what did we do? We talked about command lines a whole bunch. So I guess today, yeah, yeah. I th I think that's it. It's uh, five thirty almost. I think I'm actually gonna call it a day. It's a very short stream. It's an hour stream. That's not really like me. <laughs> anyway, um, thanks everyone for coming. It's been good. Um, I'll probably upload this video to YouTube tomorrow or something. Yeah, um, everyone have a fantastic day. Bye.